Hi guys, welcome back to Just Carve Rob. Yep, how you doing? Oh, I've been doing better, I can tell you that. Playing around with this camera trying to get things set up here a little bit. See what we can see. Can you see that? We've got to bring it down a little bit more. Oop, too much. Yeah, I guess, I guess we'll try it there. A little bit of a different camera angle today, guys. Okay, this is our 57 Chevy. We've been working on doing a little. Ow, ow, ow. Trying to do a little bit of carving. You can see I chopped my finger in half right here with a uh, zip cut wheel. It's cutting some metal. And, uh,. Yeah, this, this ain't going to work left-handed up here. Anyway, yeah, I can see I'm going to slice my other hand open. Okay, I was doing a little bit of uh, metal fab work and angle head grinder jammed up into a piece of steel. And I was cutting it like this. It jammed up and went, wham, boink. Boinked me right across the finger. Right to the bone. Just missed that knuckle. Boy, I tell you what, it smarts, guys. It smarts. So, trying trying to carve with three fingers and a thumb is uh, isn't easy. It stings like crazy. Maybe if I turn this guy around here. do it this way that way there I don't got to use that don't got to use the boo-boo finger I can just hold it hold my knife in these three fingers here and a thumb and use this thumb as a lever and drive that blade forward get in there yep yep so that's what our 57 now I got. I usually have the camera right overhead, so, and I'm a terrible cameraman. Now I've got it sitting on the tripod off on an angle, so I don't see me being any better of a <laughs> any better of a cameraman with it that way. But uh, so, yeah, we got to get in here and do this windshield, um, and get these windows cut back and get these door frames cut down. But yeah, I haven't haven't got much done with the car. The car stick as of late. I gotta turn it back around. Yeah, I haven't haven't got that much done on it. But that's what it's looking out, looking to be like. Uh, just trying to get this fender here cut back a just a little bit. I want the uh these arrow things that are on the hood to get cut in. Yep. So that's what we're doing. We're working on. And we have to cut our body trim in here. So that means we gotta take a cut the body trim in. So we gotta take the everything back. We gotta take it all down. Down to make this chrome these chrome things stick out here. So uh, yeah, this is the first day since I decided to try chopping off my finger that I've been out here working on this. I should have, if, if the cars were facing the other way, I could use my left hand. You know, if the cars were, instead of facing down this way, if he was facing down that way, I could use my left hand to get in there and take all this back a little bit. See, that's all we're doing. We're just just trying to take these doors down to make all this what would be the chrome. Or uh, a lot of these cars, this was stainless steel. It was high glue polished stainless steel. Uh, I guess there was a mixture. Some cars use chrome. Some cars use stainless steel. I don't know if it depended on the body kit that you bought for it, or I don't know about any of that stuff. 
Um, I just I like watching car shows and um, you'll hear them say on some of these car shows that this car didn't have chrome, it had stainless. Uh, I think chrome ended up being the cheaper version. Uh, number one, uh, the plating was a whole lot less than stainless. Number two, the stainless never goes crappy like chrome. You know, you get chrome that's old, old chrome, and it'll start, uh, you know, getting pock marks and stuff in it from time. So, yeah, I, I know some of them had chrome, some of them had stainless. Um, not too sure about the years and the models and all that stuff. All the ones that I ever had had the uh, chrome. They didn't have the stainless. I, that must have been like an upgrade package to get the stainless stuff. Or like I said, uh, it just got to be cheaper to chrome plate everything than to produce it in stainless. Because stainless is not the easiest thing to make... Uh, stamp out okay it's a harder metal so if you can get away with like nowadays cars are all plastic even the chrome is plastic but back in the day they would use uh, zinc or pot metal white metal and they would cast it and then chrome it where the stainless actually had to be stamped okay so imagine in the early days they were stamping everything and just using the stainless because that you didn't have to chrome it right and then as they moved on in time uh, chroming became a, a cheaper way of doing things so it's like anything else they're looking to do it the cheapest way they can and get the most money out of it I think that's why you've seen a lot of the old hot rods they didn't even have the they peel all the chrome right off of them Not only that, but if you got rid of all that extra chrome and stainless, you're lighting the car up by three ounces, it might go a little faster. I don't know. I've always been a big fan of the shiny stuff on my cars, your car jewelry. Um, that's like all this flat paint stuff they're doing nowadays, satin paints. Not a big fan. When I was in high school, a lot of my cars look like that because they were in primer. You know, kids, you buy... When you got to buy your own car, mommy and daddy won't buy it for you. You end up getting something that probably should have been taken off the street years ago. So, all, all kids want their cars to look cool. So, you'd sand all the rusty rust and the paint off of it and prime it up. And they even had a primer called Hot Rod Black. Or you had the uh, the rust colored stuff, which was great because it was rust colored. So if you had any rust on your car, it just kind of all blended in, right? Yep. So we're just peeling that back. Um, I got to come back in here and cut all the louvers in for this. I got to get this smoothed out down here. I may have to use a diamond, a flat diamond, to come in here and flatten all that out, right? Oh, I think somebody's at the door. Who is it? Who is it? Just a minute, guys. Let me answer the door. And who are you? You come from what? Wisconsin? You had to walk here. They dropped you off. The mail truck dropped you off at the end of the street. Seriously? Hey, okay, well, come on in. Hey, guys. We got a visitor from Wisconsin. What's your name? Socky! 
Saki? Your name is Saki? Saki? Where'd you come from? Ben! Ben who? Ben at Studio on the Lake! Ben at Studio on the Lake. How do I know that you came from Studio on the Lake? Look at my soul! Uh-oh. Oh, it's backwards, Saki. <laughs> it's, ba <laughs> it's backwards. It says Ben, Studio on the Lake. Oh, so uh, why do you have you? Where's your heel? Walked it right off. Had to walk all the way to Milwaukee and then take the Badger, the car ferry boat over to over to Ludington, and then from Ludington I had to walk all the way till I got to the post office, and then I I mailed myself to your address because Ben has your address. Oh. Uh, why are you here? Well, Jordy was making fun of Ben, and this hole's in his sock, and Ben threw me in the rag barrel. Threw you in the rag barrel? He said he couldn't wear holy socks no more. Oh, boy. Yeah, I can see you got a hole there. Oh, you got a hole on that side, too, huh? Yeah. I think we got to zoom our camera out so everybody can see you. I think we're too zoomed in. Yeah, the camera's shaking because I'm trying to find the zoom button, guys. Oh, there we go. Maybe a little more. Yeah, look at that. You got holes in you, socky. Well, what kind of sock are you? I'm a gym sock. A gym sock? Smile for the camera, Saki. Ha 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 I got out of the rag bag, Ben! I made it to Rob's over just go Rob, Ben! Ha 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 Well, you look like with that notch taken out of you, you can sit on a shelf. But you're not an elf, you're a sock. You got the elf on the shelf, not a sock on the... A sock on the rock? We don't got no rocks in Michigan, it's all sand. So, Saki, what's your plans now that you're here? Oh, I figured I'd hang out with Just Carve Rob for a while. Are you going to throw me in the rag bin? No, nah, I won't throw you in the rag bin. I'll put you up there on the shelf with the rest of the critters. Oh, boy, friends! Oh, yeah, you'll have all kinds of friends. Bye, Ben! I'm not coming home, Ben! I'm staying at Just Carve Rob's bin! Ha, ha, ha! That'll teach you to throw me in the rag bag, Ben! Rob, can you wash Ben's name off me? Nah, that looks like it's in permanent marker there, Saki. Ben Studio on the lake. Oh boy. You sure Ben isn't going to miss you? He threw me in the rag bag. How's he going to miss me? He threw me in the rag bag. You don't like in the rag bag? No, there's a lot of things in that rag bag that stink. Well, you're not a, I don't, you're a dirty sock. You're not all that clean yourself. Nope, he didn't even wash me before he threw me in the rag bag. After Jordy left that comment, he just took me and threw me in the rag bag. Well, that's terrible, Saki. That's why I came over here. You were closer than Jordy. Jordy lives way over there in Latin Canada. And I wasn't going to try crossing the border, you know, with the COVID-19 stuff. Oh. All right. So, uh... We'll take you and put you up there on the shelf with the rest of the guys. Like your wood spirit fish, Rob. Yeah, he's pretty cool, isn't he? Yeah, I'm going to go over there and talk to him. Okay, bye-bye, Saki. Bye. All right, so Ben's old socks are showing up at my doorstep to hang out. What are you doing to your socks, Ben, that they're tra traveling all the way from... Wisconsin to Michigan, the land of beer and cheese to the land of sand and water. Well, we do have quite a few microbreweries popping up, so who knows? All right, so 
I guess uh, we're going to call this a video, guys. We're 15 minutes into it. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and try cutting the rest of my fingers off using my left hand. Without, the, without me having to film this, I can spin it around and use my left hand and get all this stuff carved down. So that's our video for today, my friends. Share, subscribe, and like. And uh, come back and see us again. All right? We're going to be doing after my finger gets healed up here. Uh, we got a lot of carving projects. Man, this finger thing, I'll tell you, it's looking a lot better than when it first happened. So I'm not going to take the Band-Aid off and show you guys. It's disgusting. Grinders leave nothing behind. Okay, when they slice, they take the whatever they cut and they throw it out the back as sparks. And if it happens to be flesh, it spits it out the back as mush. You know what the worst thing is? Is after cutting my finger, I went in the house, threw some sulfur powder on it, cleaned it up, bandaged it up. I had to go clean the grinder because it had all kinds of raw meat stuck in it. Yeah, disgusting. I know. We'll, st we'll leave it there, guys, because it's not a pretty picture, all right? You can see the boo-boo, the boo-boo finger. All right, so we will catch you guys on the next one. Share, subscribe, and like. And uh, let's say hi to all of our friends out there. Thanks for subscribing. You guys are awesome. Love having you here. And uh, as we start getting into the colder months, we will be doing more, more and more carving videos. Uh, you know, right now in the summer is when you got to get everything ready for the winter. So, and then once you're in winter, there isn't much you can do but sit around and carve. Uh, yep, so we'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.